While she claims to be the girl next door, J-Lo is best known to be a diva behind a doorknob. But is that the real reason celebrities and everyday folks alike avoid working with this star? Well, if the foundations of your success can be attributed to the chairman of Sony Music using you to piss off his ex-wife, one could say you may not have earned your place in the industry, aka J-Lo's sabotage startup. For those out of the loop, Mariah Carey's the ex-wife of former Sony chairman Tommy Antola, and they had a contentious divorce. During which which J-Lo was a rookie newly signed to the label. She was young, she was pretty, and she was absolutely desperate. So Matola used J-Lo as his pawn against Mariah. Matola tried to sabotage Carrie's glitter soundtrack, and to quote Mariah herself after hearing my new song, using the same sample I used, Sony rushed to make a single for another female entertainer on their label, whom I don't know. A reference, of course, to the famous quote Mariah had made about J-Lo years prior. Carrie knows that she got the last laugh, however, to quote all of that Lover Boy ended up being the best selling single of 2001 in the United States. Matola, however, did find success in damaging Mariah's career and exasperating JLo's in the process. By feeding her successful samples and lyrics for her to repurpose, it worked so well that JLo just kept stealing from other artists. It's part of the reason she's so hated. She profited heavily off of black underground artists, either by literally using their vocals or by taking and rewriting their songs with slightly differing lyrics. Said artists were shy. Ashante Moore, Christina Millian, Usher, Mariah Carey, and of course Ashante, the biggest victim of J-Lo's music theft. She stole from all of those artists and more, and sometimes not even just once. Her history of profiting off of black artists and music is well known and extremely problematic. In fact, it got so bad, artists would start leaking their own music so J-Lo couldn't steal it. No artist wants to work with someone who can only be titled and arts themselves because they steal from others, especially if they're massively egotistical about it. Because J-Lo, in her mind, is a master craft. She's the world's best dancer. She's the world's best actress and singer and performer. Having confidence is one thing, but being self-obsessed is another. Back in 2021, a string of articles came out about how the self-glorifying J-Lo actually burnt bridges with celebrity acquaintances with her behavior. To quote, everyone in J-Lo's life has to accept it's about her pretty much all of the time, or they simply won't be tolerated in the first place, spilt an insider to the globe. But lately, it's gotten boring for the like of Lee Remini, Beyonce and Jay-Z, Demi Lovato, Gwyneth Paltrow, and others because of her non-stop me, me, me conversations. The source, an alleged fired house staffer, also added that J-Lo is standoffish and cool and never asks others what they're doing and isn't entrusted to know. She won't even hug them for fear, it'll spoil her makeup. Yet, yeah, there's having confidence. Then there's having arrogance, as Jennifer Lopez has walked a dangerous tightrope between the two for literal years. Traditionally, you know, it's the people, it's Hollywood their press, the movie going public, that determines who is an A-list star. Not the star themselves, but during her literally renowned, famous 1998 movie line interview, J-Lo yeeted tradition and declared herself an A-list star. When movie line asked Lopez why she believed she was hot in Hollywood at the time, she responded candidly with, because I'm the best and I feel I can do anything. Because I'm the best? Having too much belief in your own abilities inevitably gets under the skin of colleagues and viewers alike. Lopez even then went on to claim that she had something called the stardom glow, but not everyone saw it that way. Sure, 1998 was a good year for her. Veteran film critic Roger Elbert even praising J-Lo for the Selena biopic, but praises like that went right to Lopez's head before she fell off in 2003. Despite that, J-Lo ultimately isn't a horrific actress, but she isn't a great one either. So how does she still land roles evidently not made for her? Flirty fishing. You always flirt with your co-stars. It's harmless, Lopez told Movie Line in 1998. And it's uh, most definitely not, especially if that workplace is a movie set and millions of dollars are at stake. Directors are gonna get nervous about their actors flirting. So how does J-Lo then deal with that? She flirts with them too. To quote her, that's the best way to deal with these big wigs, she said to Movie Line when they asked about her relationship with the U-turn director, Oliver Stone. I just went in there and we hit it off and I flirted with him, got tough with him, and he just loved it. Now can you imagine if the roles was reversed and a man who had just said that quote was saying it about female co-stars and directors. Let's hold women accountable for using their sexuality to also pressure and discomfort others into giving them what they want, shall we? That's not cool, J-Lo. And speaking of not cool, if she ain't flirting with the male co-stars, she's victimizing the starlets. J-Lo has a mean streak and competitive side. Pair that with ego and self-pedestalization. It makes sense she'd say such things 
things as Tell Me What She's Been In about Gwyneth Paltrow in 1998, months before Paltrow would literally win the Best Actress Award. And she also tacked on Some People Get Hot by Association. I heard more about Gwen and Brad than I ever heard about her work. These quotes were pulled from the famous 1998 movie line interview after she was asked what she thought of actresses she was competing with for roles. She then went on to say Romeo and Juliet star Claire Danes does the same thing with every character and that she was never a big fan of two time Oscar nominee Winona Ryder. What did she think of Cameron Diaz? A lucky model who's been given a lot of opportunities. I just wish she would have done more with them. And when talking about Madonna and the insane success of 1996's Evita, she scoffs and shares her opinion of the literal queen of pop. Do I think she's a great actress? No. Acting's what I do. So I'm harder on people when they say, oh, I can do that. I can act. I'm like, hey, don't spit on my craft. Your craft, J Lo, bit of a stretch for someone who bit the hand that fed her. And I'm talking about Rosie Perez because J Lo wouldn't have a career without her. Perez was the choreographer at an open casting call for In Living Color in 1991. Well, the show's creator called J Lo a chubby and corny looking girl. Rosie saw potential in her dancing and was adamant they give her a chance. But then writes in her autobiography that soon all of the girls are coming into my office complaining about how J Lo was manipulating wardrobe, makeup, and me all to her advantage. Perez then added when she confronted Lopez, she reacted like, quote, some ghetto biatch, screaming and pounding her chest and yelling at Perez, I know I'm good, I'm better than any of these girls and you know it. Lopez leaves In Living Color just to, after two seasons, but once she makes it big in Hollywood, she went on a smear campaign and making disparaging comments about Perez, who she owes her career to. Stories like this make it obvious that JLo treats people pretty poorly, which means that her staff has it tough. Be prepared to be on call 24 seven to carry her to her every women need. And in Unless you are one or two of the staff who are very senior, don't even expect her to acknowledge you. One staff member said it was like working for a ghost. In 2022, amid a TikTok storm of fans sharing negative encounters with Lopez, TikTok user Kyla shares how her father worked for a driving company and he refused to drive for JLo after learning what the rules are for it. She doesn't allow the drivers to look at her or talk to her. They're not allowed to let her luggage touch the ground and even if the driver looks in the rear view min window, they could be subjected to a scolding. That's believable since a woman on Quora, Emily Watford, shared her experience working at a concert arena and literally watching a doorman get fired for making eye contact with JLo. According to Today Mag, JLo requires her nannies to work grueling hours every day of the week. Quote, normally people who have huge sums of money and have loads of professional and social obligations hire a nanny for each child, especially newborns. But it's as if Jennifer expects one nanny to not only take care of both twins, but to work 16 hour days, seven days a week, as told to the National Enquirer. Really, just pity anyone like a maid or an airline attendant that comes within her orbit. I mean, she's going to ignore you as rudely as possible. Take the United Airlines first class air attendant who merely asked JLo what she would like to drink. To quote him, Jennifer refused to even acknowledge me. She turned her head away and told her personal assistant, please tell him I'd like a diet coke with and lime. It gets a lot worse when you talk about the German hotel maid who dared to knock on her door and politely ask for an autograph. Named Pre Dodage, she said it took all of my courage and I rang the bell to get an autograph, but I was rejected by two assistants at the door. A day later, the cleaning company that employed me called and said Miss Lopez has complained and I was fired right there on the phone. Lopez then turned around and called the story hurtful and refuted she got anyone fired, but she didn't deny making the call. Anyways, I'd be mortified by something like that myself, but that's honestly J-Lo for you. That's how she treats people. She's completely shameless. This is a woman who will fire you for looking at her and has no concept of why that's not okay. A woman on TikTok, Julia Wang, shared her story of meeting one of JLo's backup dancers in Vegas concert where JLo was performing and shared how cruelly they were treated, saying if you were pretty or if you were Latina, it was like a game over. She hated you. Oh, JLo, not being a girl's girl. Uh, please, we've had that established since the bash of 1998. Wang further went and claimed that JLo refused to talk or even look at the backups during their many hours of rehearsal time, except for the occasional eye roll or scoff, and that the only time her demeanor does a 180 is when that men walk into the room. She only treats women women poorly because she views them as competition, which as a woman is the deadliest seven sins of girl codes. That's the end of our video. I sure hope you enjoyed. Take time to like, subscribe, and share.